guys, this is Dormouse03, and this is Mass Effect. Let's jump in to Mass Effect 1. Y'all, I am so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't eat, like, I'm sitting here like, ah! Okay, super excited. Let's go. Mass Effect 1. <sighs> it's a pretty relay. See how the load times are on this thing. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to see how how those how those elevators work <laughs> in this remaster. All right. Uh, okay. Cool. 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 So here we are. Mass Effect One. Oh, the opening screen. <sighs> and. Okay, so clearly I have a ton of nostalgia for this game. Um, so be forewarned <laughs> that there's going to be a ton of nostalgia and, and love uh, coming up. But before we get started, we're going to have to do some calibrations. <laughs> Garrus, help me! Uh, that's fine. Maybe we need to... No, that's probably good. We'll just adjust that if we need to. What we want to do is invert my controls, though, because... Yeah. If we don't invert the controls, that's gonna be... That's gonna be bad. Uh... Interesting. Okay, so so I knew that they had done this. Uh, they changed the level caps and like the leveling system for the Legendary Edition. So we're gonna put it on Legendary mode and we'll see how that is. Uh, apparently, it's you can kind of hit that level cap, that one to thirty level cap, in one playthrough. So okay, we're gonna put subtitles on for everybody's benefit and then we've got difficulties here now we're gonna be playing through on insanity at some point uh, I'm tempted to go with casual just to like get through faster but we're gonna put it on normal normal feels like what you should be playing on so we'll put it on normal I've played. I've. I have played a game or two. <laughs> so, uh, if you missed my intro to this series, uh, this is going to be me playing through this game. Uh, I'm gonna work on getting all the achievements, but I'm not gonna play through on insanity right now. Uh, I'm gonna be thinking about making a, a guide and like have my mind sort of in that headspace to prepare for that, but. Right now, I'm just playing through, I'm enjoying, so we're playing on normal, we're not playing on insanity right now, so. Well, that is for later. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start a new career, folks. Woohoo! Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Thank you. Classified information requested. Yes, we've gotta build our shepherd! Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. So, I'm going to make a custom because I want a custom background. So, please log in to access. I'm going to keep the default appearance and the default name because if I was customizing the appearance, I would probably choose. I would make my own name, but I'm keeping default for right now. Just to because I want to see it. They they put a de the default Femshep appearance. In here uh, for the legendary edition and I want to see how it how it looks in good old Mass Effect 1 so uh, now we have your sort of uh, you're making a general backstory that comes into play a little bit so you've got uh, your parents were in the military and you followed in their footsteps you have raised out in the colonies and you have orphaned on earth and so all of those bring just little flavor things uh, in with some of the dialogue and the way that you interact with some of the characters. 
I'm going to go with uh, military lineage. So both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. So I'm going to be uh, spacer background here. Confirm psychological profile. And then your psychological profile. These are, it's funny because this is a neutral paragon and renegade template. And I didn't notice this before uh, when I was playing in the past, probably because I was younger and I don't know, I just didn't notice such things. But War Hero is your paragon basis. Uh, so you're a hero, you're brave, you know, you risk your own life and to save others. It is your typical uh, good aligned, lawful, good hero paragon. Ruthless is your template for renegade. So get doing what is necessary to get the job done. You're cold and calculating and ruthless and renegade. And so that is clearly the template for a renegade shepherd. Soul survivor, soul survivor is neutral. So uh, that is the one that I'm going to go with as far as the background, just because I think it's I don't know, it's interesting and it's what I chose for my first Shepherd back in the day. So, during your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell. And now, you alone are left to tell the tale. So, sort of tragic backstory, I guess. Uh, and and puts you on sort of a neutral slate. And I think probably helps you relate to some of the other characters. It puts you on a, on a scale where you can relate to more people, I think, than either being the, the good girl or the ruthless. So we're gonna go with that. Confirm military specialization. And now you've got some different, these are your just different classes. So straight soldier, uh, weapons are your specialty and you don't have a lot of abilities um but you can wear the best armor and stuff um engineer is straight techie and so you get a lot of of cool tech stuff where you can hack and you can overload and and stuff like that adept is your pure biotic so you have a lot of really powerful biotic stuff and you get access to the most powerful biotic abilities like singularity infiltrator is a mixed class of soldier and engineer so you get a little bit of each but not not the like top tier of either one you get some uh some mix a mix of both sentinel is a mix of engineer and adept and vanguard is a mix of soldier and adept and so i'm gonna go with sentinel it's, uh, it's kind of my go-to. I really like this class because it gives you a little bit of everything, I feel like. Because obviously you can use guns and stuff in any class. And you get a little bit of biotics and you get a little bit of tech. And so it feels to me like when I'm making my squad, I have a little bit of everything. And so I can fill out my squad with, uh, with pretty much anybody. So that's what I'm going to go with. identification. And we're going to go with default appearance. So there you go. Uh, Jane Shepard, Spacer, Soul Survivor, Sentinel. A lot of S's. Shepard, Spacer, Soul Survivor, Sentinel. Didn't really do that on purpose, but there it is. Identification. And we're going to confirm. confirm. And we're going to go with all that. It's fine. And we're going to start a game. I'm excited. Well, what about Shepard? She's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of her life. Military service runs in the family. Both her parents were in the Navy. She saw her whole unit die on a cruise. She could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. 
I'll make the call. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Whew. All right. So here we are, and we get to start to agree, disagree, or be mean to our crewmates. So we've got our first introduction to Joker and Caden, uh, and I think that uh, Joker is paranoid. Not that he's wrong, but we're going to go with this one. You always expect the worst. Well, bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so... What are we doing here? Joker! Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? You made him mad. Great. You pissed the captain off, and now I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. <laughs> All right. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so we've got our journal that's got our you know missions and assignments and stuff uh when we have the codex which the codex in these games is so good um because it's got it's just got a ton of information in here and the systems alliance it it is an you. independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole the Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. 
the expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. So I'm not going to go through all of these codex entries, but I just wanted to you know, show that to you guys. This codex has a ton of information in here. Um, about the different species and places and people that we are going to be encountering throughout this game. It is awesome and definitely worth, worth checking out. It gives you uh, a lot more background on kind of the world that they have built here, which is pretty great. So here is our, here's us, uh, and we get to put some points into some things. So, let's see. All right, so we haven't unlocked that yet. I think we unlock it here. We unlock lift once we get throw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some points into charm. Um, pop a point into barrier and I will start placing some points into throw because I want to unlock lift so mm, overload is really good too though and we can unlock sabotage yeah that's wait no okay uh, that's what we'll do for right now all, a lot of these things are really good, and hopefully I'm going to be upgrading a lot of them, but like lift is great for getting some people out of your way and dealt with. Stasis is a really good... They, they are all really just, just good abilities. And we're going to be having some fun with that, so... Um, do we have any equipment? Equipment? Equipment is not a word. Equipment is... We're looking for no we don't we just got basic stuff okay we'll unlock some stuff later here is the normandy and we're getting dragged right along with them relax presley you're gonna give yourself an ulcer all right it looks good you guys uh, you can definitely tell that the graphics have been improved i'm hoping that a lot of the pop-in from this first game has been improved. I, I know that that was a big problem, at least for me, with the first game, was there was a lot of graphical pop-in, uh, and sort of textures taking a long time to load, so haven't noticed that yet, but we'll see. Uh, but right now we're going to talk to Navigator Presley. Hello, Navigator Presley. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Uh, yeah, but what's up with you and Adam's arguing? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander, just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Um, and so this is, introduces the radial. I know this is pretty common in gaming these days, but this was one of the first games who that had this type of layout and kind of brought this type of uh, choice system into mainstream. Uh, so... You know, it doesn't seem like anything grand and revolutionary right now, but it really, really was at the time. And so typically the way that this is laid out is you have your Paragon 
statement at the top. You have a neutral statement here and you have a renegade statement here. And then over on the left, you have uh, things that you can ask to get more information. So you notice how you know now we can ask some more questions and stuff. Uh, all three of these kind of end the conversation. So we're gonna go through and, and find out some more about some stuff. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. You should talk to Joker about those theories. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, ma'am. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. I think they might be on to something, you guys. I think there's more going on here than just a simple shakedown run. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board, especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command, and they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. All right. Uh, first thing that I want to note, uh, the the graphical overhaul of the people, you know, the, um, the models, character models, looks good. Uh, the voice, the lip sync, looks good. They, they have done a pretty impressive job with what they've done with this game so far. And this is just like the first five minutes. So I'm impressed so far. And I just want to talk a little bit about the, just about the story right now. It's... So, sorry, I was listening to what they were saying there. They do a really good job of kind of establishing some things right from the get-go. You know, uh, they've established sort of the world that you're in. You're in space. You have these jump points, these Mass Effect relays that allow you to jump uh, across long distances in space. So they have established kind of how we get around the galaxy. They've also established sort of humanity's relationship with the other races that we have encountered. They mentioned that first contact war uh, Presley just did. And, and everybody's sort of suspicious about various people. So suspicious about some of the aliens. The Turians is the first alien race that we see here. Uh, and they were the first race that humans encountered when they discovered uh, faster than light travel and they discovered the mass relays and they encountered the Turians and they of course went to war with them because that's what we do <laughs> when we meet new people. Uh, Turians are a fairly sort of militaristic race anyway so uh, sort of unfortunate that they were the first ones that we found but you know. Uh, so that is cool. And I don't know, it just, it puts, 
it I think it just does a really nice job of putting putting you in this galaxy and sh- like showing you through all of these all of these little interactions you know where we are we're the new kids on the block we don't trust the other races necessarily and the council which they made mention of which we'll find out more about in a bit uh don't trust these specters who are these elite operatives sort of like you know spies um you know that can kind of go out and operate outside of people's jurisdictions um I think it does a really good job of establishing a lot of these things up front through the things that you're hearing about and it's not too heavy handed so I don't know just wanted to make mention of that good good storytelling uh, from the beginning here in my opinion but now we're going to talk to Jenkins and Chakwas um... what do you think commander we won't be staying on Eden Prime too long will we I mentioned for some real action I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Mm. I like the new look, Dr. Chakwas. You're looking, looking snazzy. And I think we need to relax, because Dr. Chakwas is always right. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. So tell us about Spectres. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. They're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds, just like you on a coos. I try not to think about a coos. Sorry, Commander. I I didn't mean to offend you. I I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? So yeah, so there's an example of a little bit of like the flavor that you get from some of your background stuff. It does get peppered in through here, which is nice. It doesn't impact things too much, but it is acknowledged and flavors some of the conversations that you have and I think that was a good example of that so good good work you're from Eden Prime aren't you Jenkins what's it like it's very peaceful commander they've been real careful with development so you don't have any city noise or pollution my parents lived on the outskirts of the colony at night I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement it was gorgeous but when I got older I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me that's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime's one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. But there's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. You're gonna do all right, Jenkins. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. You should be careful, kid. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not going to screw this up. 
captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. We'll see how that all pans out for him. So, uh, Chakwas. Definitely a cool lady. Alright, so... That's Nihilus. Can we go to other parts of the ship just yet? No, everything's locked off. Uh, so yeah. Oh, can we access? No, we can't access. Oh, can we? Oh. Only the commanding officer can specify a destination for the Normandy. And sadly, we're not the commanding officer. Wait, so why does this prompt exist? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so we're gonna go talk to Nihilus and Anderson. There was a little bit of, uh, you know, an, a, so, an as-you-know aspect to some of these first conversations. I think it was done pretty good, you know, uh, because, you know, Shepard's asking people about things that she probably already knows. Like, she already knows about how humans and Turians interact with each other. You know, she's been in the military. Her parents were in the military in this version of her backstory. So, you know, she would know some of these things that she's asking about, but that is for the benefit of the player to know about some of those things. And it wasn't too heavy-handed. It wasn't like, as you know, Commander Shepard. Humans and Turians haven't gotten along because we were in a war with one another, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't, it felt more like natural conversation, you know? Uh, and so I, th I think that they did that. They have done this exposition stuff pretty good here at the beginning. So let's get into it. Nihilus, what's you up to, bud? Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I've never been there. But you know of it. It's become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Mm, ominous. Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Is someone gonna fill me in, Captain? We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. So I don't want to be a jerk, so I'm not going to ask this question. Uh, and again, I do like that they they didn't make Shepard an idiot, right? So it's like she doesn't say, who are the Protheans? Which you could have done. Uh, but she acted like she knows who the Protheans are. Uh, and, and it felt more like a natural conversation while they were explaining that bit about the Protheans being sort of the progenitors and creating the technology and whatever. Um, or at least so they believe. And it felt like a natural conversation of people who all know things instead of making Shepard the player character as th this person who is an idiot, right? And like doesn't know things that, that she should know. So I do like that. Um, I like that they did that. Also, look at her eyes. 
they're very pretty. I'm loving this graphics overhaul. All right. It never hurts to have a few extra hands on board. The beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Aw, yeah. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Eden Prime. It's... <laughs> I love how it's described here. It's like... This is the starting village. I, I really like how this game starts out. And it makes you feel like, okay, this is going to be going and you're going to do some, you know, easy missions. You're going to prove yourself to Nihilus. Nihilus sort of gives you an idea of what the specters are supposed to be. Kind of this get the job done. We have the skills. I have the special skills to, you know, get what needs to be done done. And we take care of the galaxy and, you know, the, the elite, the elite of the elite, the best of the best of the best, sir you know, um, kind of attitude. And so that is cool. I also like that Eden Prime is presented as, you know, this is, you're just, it's just a pickup mission. We're going to pick up this artifact and we're going to transport it. We're going to make sure that things are going okay. There may be a little bit of trouble, but it seems like it's going to be this sort of easy start off mission. Uh, in the, you know, the little farming town. Kind of like, you know, if you were starting off your D&D &D quest and you're starting in the local, you know, village. That's what this feels like. And I think that that's cool, and we'll see more on that in a minute. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology. Even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. 
The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! out after that no calm traffic at all just goes dead there's nothing reverse and hold the 38.5 okay. status report 17 minutes out captain no other alliance ships in the area take us in joker fast and quiet this mission just got a lot more complicated a small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention it's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. squad here we got to put some points into some things I think we are gonna put some points into Caden's decryption and barrier I guess we'll give him some extra some extra stuff. And then, oh, let's just put these points into assault rifles. <laughs> okay. So we, it, you can see we've already got some Paragon points for things that we've said. Uh, and a little sliver of Renegade there, uh, just from our conversations, you know. We haven't really made any big key choices or anything yet, but we've already got some points there, which is which is cool. Um, we want to... We can't even remove his helmet. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't like to have the helmets in the cutscenes and stuff. We'll see if that's another option that I need to change here in a second, but... Going. Right. And now we have our pistol with which we can shoot these little gas bags and miss them. Damn. Eat this! Oh dear, I didn't want to do that. Okay, uh, that was a bomb. 
That was a grenade. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I was like, how do I reload my pistol? I forgot. You don't reload your pistol. We can run and check it out. We've got some stuff and some meta gel. Ooh, we went right into cover. I'm I'm interested to see how these uh how these changes work that they made to things. And then here's our here's our little weapons wheel here. I would like for myself. I want my assault rifle. And Caden's fine with the pistol. Probably. You know what? We'll give him that sniper rifle. Why not? Probably check on him, yeah. It, it'll never be the same again! Stop it. Get out of here, gas bags. Alright, where's Jenkins? 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 Did I miss you? I've got some burned out buildings here, Shepard. Please stop oh, throwing grenades. Check it out. Your mouse. I'll try to catch up with you at the dig site. There he is. <laughs> I totally missed his body there. Poor Jenkins. Richard L. Jenkins. I salute you, sir. You shouldn't have run out of cover. Rip right through his shields. We're at a chance. We'll see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete. But I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, man. Ah, <sighs> poor Jenkins. And the first casualty of the Mass Effect series. So, that, I mean, that's why you get limited options with him and you can't even, you know, take off his helmets and stuff because he's, he is doomed. He's doomed and there is no way to see him. Cover, we follow. Wonderful. How about attack that dude? No, we don't want to attack that dude. Okay, I'll attack that dude. Geth Recon drone? Oh, there you are. Attack him, Caden! Get him! Let's see if he can kill him. Come on, Caden! You can do better than that. Get him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, he got him. Good one, Caden. You did it. <laughs>
melee. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. <laughs> He's the one in charge here, ma'am. I tried, y'all. I tried to melee that Geth, and they just killed it. Okay. We're on normal. It's cool. <laughs> you okay, Ash? Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. Yes, ma'am. We held our position as long as we could, until the Geth overwhelmed us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. We could use your help, Williams. Aye, aye, ma'am. It's time for payback. <laughs> oh, Ashley. So fiery. Uh, okay. What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Vale. Nobody's really heard much from them since. Tell me everything you know about the Beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins and the Beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the Beacon itself, but I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. What happened to the researchers at the dig site? I don't know. They set up camp near the Beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better than mine. Describe what happened leading up to the attack. We were sent out a couple of nights ago from the main colony to secure the area. It seemed like a routine patrol until the Geth hit us. We never knew they were coming. Have you seen a Turian Spectre around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. Alright. Move out! Alright. So we have a new squad mate. Let's... Her some some stuff. Uh, when do we unlock shotguns? All right, so we're gonna put some points into pistols so that we can unlock shotguns for Miss Ashley Williams, uh, gunnery chief. Uh, I like Ash. That might be an unpopular opinion, but I, I like Ashley. And Kate. They are they are both they are both pretty cool in their own ways. Not my favorite characters. But good. And the voice acting I haven't mentioned this yet, but the voice acting is so good in these games. Let's make a save. <laughs> The voice acting is so good in these games. It's, uh... It's, it's just really cool. How they got so much talent. Alright. Use your sniper rifle. Caden! Eh, use your pistol. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I forgot that you're not a weapons guy. Alright. You use your, you use your, your shoddy. Look at that, we got some new equipment. Alright, upgrades. Now we can start to upgrade our equipment here. 
let's go with oh we have chemical and phase bullets so these things have a lot of shields so we're gonna go with phase ick bullets for me and let's just give your um yeah you shot me put some chemical rounds in there for you ash okie dokie let's go see all right lean out of cover and fire uh beautiful Move up, squad! Uh, does this give me our powers? Yes, it does. So, that's mine. Cadence Ashley doesn't have any. Okay. Now let's try to melee. Can we melee? What's the melee button? Yes! Oh, let's not die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. B is melee attack. I know. I, I got it. I got that. Okay. We should use some medigel. Nope. What's the medigel button? Weapons. This is the dig site. The beacon was right here. It must have been moved. By who? Our side or the Geth? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. You think anyone got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Maybe hiding up in the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Okay. Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport up ahead. I want to check it out. I'll wait for you there. All right, Nihilus. Everyone was still alive when they stalked him on the spike. Killing us isn't enough. The Geth want us to suffer. Is that what you think? That they want us to suffer? I mean, I guess that's a okay interpretation of that, knowing nothing about it, but that really shows us where your head's at, Ash. They want us to suffer. Impaling victims instead of just shooting them. There must be some reason behind it. Classic psychological warfare. They're using terror as a weapon. Okay. That's a perhaps more reasoned guess there, Caden. We're gonna find out. Something is burning. Looks like they hit the camp hard. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. <laughs> oh god, they're still alive. Nope, they're not. What did the Geth do to them? Well, you see. They made them into husks. Oh boy. I'm not using cover at all. <laughs> all right. Ooh, better shoddy. Let's, uh, let's put that. You know what? Actually, let's put that on. Miss Williams. Okay. That door is closed. Security locks engaged. 
okay, decryption or omni gel. Repeat the sequence of button presses before the time expires. Oh, these mini games! <gasps> I forgot about these mini games. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Humans, thank the maker. Hurry, close the door before they come back. Don't worry, we'll protect you. Thank you, I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. So this guy seems like someone crazy, but there is a reason why he is acting that way that we're gonna find out soon. Now, I love that you can just attack him. You can straight up punch him in the face. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Did you notice a Torian in the area? I saw him, the prophet, leader of the enemy. He was here before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. I I'm sorry. Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well-preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies, groundbreaking medical advances. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil, awakened the beast, unleashed the darkness. Manuel, please, this isn't the time. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape, no hope? No, I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. I can shut him up by punching him in the face. Um, wait a minute. This is not, this was not attack him. This was asking about the attack. I'm stupid. This is the option to punch him in the face. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment. The next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the Destroyers, bringers of darkness, heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside, gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. Poor Manuel. Uh, and this is just another example of how, how good the voice acting is on the, these games. Like, even just little characters like this that had a few lines of dialogue were acted really well and it's just you know it's those little uh, attention that attention to detail you know it's just I appreciate it because it just helps you when you have bad voice acting it just breaks the immersion somewhat you know because you're like okay this is cheese you know uh, but but it wasn't that. Uh, it was good. Another Turian. Saren. Nihilus. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control.
control. Saren. Ooh, and there's the gunshot. Saren is such a good villain. I would argue the best villain of the series. Yeah. So well fleshed out. He's very Thanos uh, from the MCU. And... What is that? You'll, uh, I'll say more about that later, but looking back on this now, you know, obviously that reference didn't exist because these games came out before uh, the Avengers series, but I feel that, I feel that uh, comparison is appropriate. Stuff. Let's see if we can open this thing. Everybody, stay calm out there. We're coming out. We're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? You're okay now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Ah, uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over showed up right before the attack. Knew it was trouble the second I saw it, so we made a break for the sheds. Tell me everything you remember about the attack. The three of us were working the crops when that ship showed up. We just saw it and ran. I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. They were by the garage, over near the spaceport, right where that ship came down. No way they survived. You don't know that! We survived! If they made it to the garage, they could have had a fighting chance! Do you know anything about the Prothean beacon they dug up? We're just farmers. We heard they found something out there, but it never really mattered to us. Not until now. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Cole. That awful noise. It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only it was coming from inside your own head. It was probably trying to block communications. Whatever it was, it felt like it was tearing right through my skull. Almost made it impossible to think. I have to go. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you gotta learn when to shut up. You have something to tell me, Cole? Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. What kind of packages? I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. Ooh. We get a Paragon. Our first of the, of the Paragon options. So, uh, this is an example of the Charm Intimidate. And so I do have a point in charm, and so this option here is available. Uh, this would be the intimidate option, but we don't have any points in that. 
We're risking our lives to save this colony. You sure there's nothing else in here that could help us out? Yeah, there's one more thing. I was gonna sell it after this was over, but you probably deserve it more than I do. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. And so, but not enough points to get these options. So. Okay, forget about it. I've got more important things to worry about. Good luck. Okay. So we've got I came here to get away from the stress of living on Earth. A pistol. Are you holding out on us? Electronic skill too low. Oh no. Okay. Totally fine. So yeah, Saren, great villain, and I do like what they've done here where it's like, it established Nihilus as kind of like a mentor figure, uh, but that is not going to happen. And so it immediately kind of, I don't know, it has this little twist that just kind of blew away uh, the it's expectations nice. that you might have had, you know, with that sort of typical, typical RPG mentality of, you know, okay, this is going to be our quest giver for a while, and we're going to, you know, level up a little bit and whatnot. Uh, you know, while, while this is a, like, nice RPG introduction, uh, it does, it does have some interesting points to it you know and i think this was the first one it helped establish our villain as someone really powerful because nihilus was a specter he's the best of the best of the best sir uh he clearly knew saren and and it establishes that saren just wiped him uh it also establishes saren as someone who is uh, cold and calculated the basically the the renegade he he is the renegade uh and i think he is the person that you know shepherd could become under certain circumstances and i like the the parallels between the characters that we'll start to see later on and stuff but it was a nice establishment of his character here and uh, kills off a character that you may not have expected to be dead this soon, so. Something's moving up over behind those crates. Wait, don't, don't shoot. I'm one of you. I'm human. Sneaking up on us like that nearly got you killed. I am sorry. I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Pal. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. I need to know how Nihilus died. The other one got here first. He was waiting when your friend showed up. He, he called him Saren. I, I think they knew each other. Your friend seemed to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I, I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. We were told a Prothean beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? We're on the other platform. Probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I, I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I... I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? Tell me about the Geth attack. It was quick. One minute that ship was descending, the next, those geth were swarming over the platform, thousands of them. They must have been inside that mothership, 
They shot anything that moved. It was a massacre. Is there anything else you can tell me about the beacon? They brought it here this morning. We loaded it up onto the train and shipped it to the other platform. Hard to believe that was only a few hours ago. Feels like a whole other life. Tell me about this mothership you saw. I I've never seen anything like it before. It... It was huge. Landed over near that platform. The whole place got dark as it came down. And... It was making this noise, this... This sound that bored right into your brain. That's what woke me up. The attack came a few minutes later. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. Perhaps you could go sleep some more. You heard it here, folks. Sometimes being lazy saved your life. Also not what I wanted to do, but that's fine. We'll get the hang, we'll get the hang of these. We'll, we'll get the hang of these mechanics. Okay. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Ah yes, the power wheel. Oh yes, we want to map this stuff. Here we go. Map it. I, I think I know. I think I know. Okay. I think it puts it on. Oh my goodness. Please, Shepard. I think it puts it on this button. Yes. Okay. Totally missed that guy. Completely and utterly missed that dude. Oh, it's the Geth Destroyer. to play it on insanity. Not today, though. Okay. The cover is a little bit wonky. use it again yet? Am I still cooling down? That seems like a long cooldown. There we go. Okay. Hey, I threw him on his butt! Come on, buddy. him. There was a there was a med container back here. I saw it there it was as I ran by. Let's pick it up. The the coming in and out of cover mechanics is a little bit uh not the greatest. I don't know if I'm if I'm missing something.
Kinetic barrier here, and then we're gonna go punch him in the face. Okay. All right. So can you only map one of these? Yeah, you can only map one at a time. We're gonna map sabotage for right now because it's pretty helpful against these. Yes. Not that we have very much more to go in this part, but. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. Also, the music in this is really good. I love the the theme that plays for Saren. He's got a really good one, and it's just nice, like high energy sci-fi stuff. They, uh, I believe, it's Jack Wall and Sam Hulick that did the music on this. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. And so. Uh, they did, if, if it is, it's Jack Wallen, I think it's Jack Wallen, Sam Hewlett in this one. Uh, great job on the music. It's a fan, fantastic you know, soundtrack. It's also got nice incidental music that plays for things like the galaxy map. It's just, it's just good. Alright, I don't want to get sniped. No, no thank you. No thank you on the sniping. Three charges remaining. Well, I see one over there. Is there not one over here? You're gonna be kidding me. Alright, 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 alright. there was another one over on this side, but apparently I am mistaken. There's one over there, though. Let's disarm that. You, you guys take care of them. You're good, right? Yeah. You're good. do that. They're putting up barriers. Take care of him. I'm gonna disarm this bomb. One charge remaining. Oh. Come on, dude. You big pooper. Could you pop your head out, please? Please? Kill him. Okay, who is shooting me from behind? Is my team? Oh, dear lord. Alright, alright, alright. Stay!
Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. All right. Here we go. I still have this thing. Can I map? Get stuff? No. Okay. If we go over here, we're gonna disarm this thing. a granada in there. See how that works. I'm not sure if it did. back up his uh important business. Someone give me a hand. Okay. Alright. Cause like there's no prompt. Disarm this charge, though. I'll have to figure it out, y'all. Like I said, it's been a it's been a good minute. I'm sure the tutorial told me earlier how I was supposed to do that, and I didn't pay attention. Also, you know what? Let's use. Them. Still more enemies, and we have to disarm another bomb. Okay. I almost forgot about you bombs. Ashley Williams, <laughs> please. right now. It's okay. We'll get them. We'll get there. Alright. I'm gonna use... I completely... Yeah. Okay. I 
thought I was using a pistol. But I equipped Caden's pistol. <laughs> uh, I played this game before. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. Husk. Welcome, Ash. Perhaps. You could... Oh, I don't know. Not be dead for half the fight. Maybe that would be good. Is there anything over on me near these sides? I can't remember. It feels like it might just be empty. Nope. Look at that. Rewarded. Yeah, you. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do something about that. I think they added in this run mechanic as well. I don't think that. I don't think that it existed in the first one, or at least it wasn't as easy to use. got all the stuff. We got all of the stuff. Alright, y'all. Let's go check out this beacon. But first, there's a crate. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Immediate... Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime, the Normandy, a human alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. First mission accomplished! Uh, we get a little bit of exposition there, and some more here. Doctor? Dr. Chakwas? I think she's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? Minor throbbing. Nothing serious. How long was I out? About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. 
I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. You had no way to know what would happen. Actually, we don't even know if that's what set it off. Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. And the blast knocked you cold. Williams and I had to carry you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. Physically, you're fine. But I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Signs typically associated with intense dreaming. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. Death, destruction... Nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our exo holding up, Doctor? Well, all the readings look normal. I'd say the Commander's going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Sounds like that beacon hit you pretty hard, Commander. Are you sure you're okay? I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Uh, no, he wasn't our fault, but... Still. Responsibility. You have to take it. Did we leave Gunnery Chief Williams back on Eden Prime? I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our crew. Intel dropped the ball, sir. We had no idea what we were walking into down there. That's why things went to hell. The Geth haven't been outside the Vale in two centuries, Commander. Nobody could have predicted this. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? I won't lie to you, Shepard. Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's going to want answers. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren. That other Turian. Saren's a Spectre. One of the best. A living legend. But if he's working with the Gith, it means he's gone rogue. A rogue Spectre's trouble. Saren's dangerous. And he hates humans. Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how, I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of vision. A vision? A vision of what? I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. <laughs> what are we gonna tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction, whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation, his politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not that easy. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the Council on our side. We prove Saren's gone rogue and the Council will revoke his Spectre status. I'll contact the Ambassador and see if he can get us an audience with the Council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. All right, so that is our first mission, Eden Prime, accomplished. And 
we know a little bit more. Uh, we got our first glimpse of Saren's associate, Matriarch Benezia, uh, though we don't know her name yet. Uh, I really liked. I, I didn't. I didn't say this because I didn't want to interrupt the cutscene. But I really liked the part where he Saren is going nuts and like, rah! They got, you know, they they saw the beacon too. They're gonna ruin our plans. Rah! And like he's going nuts and he throws that piece of uh, something. I don't know what it was. He, he picked up some kind of metallic thing and threw it. <laughs> and she just like casually moves her head out of the way and it bangs behind her. I, it's just a nice. A nice little touch about their two characters, you know. Saren is, uh, like I said, he is he is very Thanos in a lot of ways, but he also has this kind of hot temper, uh, and he just loses it at some points. And he's a he's a person who is his sanity is a little bit frayed and you can see that here like it, it starts right now establishing that and that's it's really good they they start with a lot of things the narrative of this thing is just really well constructed uh and i think particularly in this first game i like i said uh in my my intro mass effect 2 is my favorite for several reasons but the the narrative structure of this first game is very tight uh the writing is really good here i mean and obviously that's my opinion but you have a lot of just good things that they do some good world building good establishing of the characters and the powers and the like the the setting and, and the world that we're in and some really good development of things uh the narrative is all very t very tight uh there's lots of seeds of things that they start to sow right from the beginning which is great um uh, seeds of things that are that are gonna come later and and the characterization and the way that things are presented I just it's just really really well done and uh, and we will continue to see that throughout this game and I'm not gonna stop gushing about it there are some problems which you know nothing is perfect uh, but I'm I just love this game and so it is such a treat to, to just be going back and playing it with you guys. So I hope that you have enjoyed uh, this first mission, and I will be back and see you for some more Mass Effect in the next one. Thanks, guys. <laughs>